What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fireside Chat. Today is May 7th, 2024. As always, we are your hosts. I'm Vince. This is Brandon. So much to talk about in the world of the San Diego Padres. Let's kick it off with the man standing right behind me. Who's that behind you? I I don't know that guy. He's new. He must be new. Oh, wait. This shoulder? Huh? Oh, yeah. Is that that Tony Gwynn? He's like trying to grab your face. (laughs) That's kind of why I picked this photo. So he's mm-hmm. just like obsessing over my head. It's, I'm a, obsessing it's a problem over I have. Let's get into it. <laughs> yeah. So, Luis Arise, the man from Miami. Padres acquired him. What was that? Was it on Saturday? Is that right? Days ago. Yeah, a couple days ago. In exchange for, I've got it right here. We've got Padres number nine, number six, and number 13 prospects. And relief pitcher, Woosuk Go. So that's Jacob Marcy, Dylan Head. Nathan Martarella and go. So that's Who's that gone. Quite <laughs> that's good. <laughs> um, so that's quite the haul. Initial thoughts on this deal. I mean, I think the biggest question for a lot of people that I've talked to about this with is why? Mm-hmm. Given the state of the Padres and where we're at. You know, what was the need? This guy's controllable for two years, but mm-hmm. I think this is another deal where I feel like I like the player. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily agree with the timing of the move, but also at the same time, when he's in a Padre uniform, I'm cheering him on and I'm not mad about it, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. hundred percent. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, it's reminiscent, you know, a little bit of Soto deal, you know, like, of course you're never going to be upset to have this guy, but at the same time, it's just like, well, we're going to see what that's going to turn into. Right. Um, Cause again, it's, it, it does hurt to lose three potential top outfield prospects, especially for a team, right? Who, who needs outfielders. So it just, that was a little bit tough to swallow. And then we're really looking Yeah. I got a point here. And I think there's something that's kind of been overshadowed here and not really looked at. I think this is one of Preller's more sensible trades that he's done in the last couple of years. And I say that because this is an instance where Arias wasn't on the block for every other team to go after. It wasn't the shiny object at the trade deadline that Mm -hmm. Preller let his ego go. I need it. I'm going to give whatever I want for it, i.e. Bogarts, i.e. Soto. Um, And I think it, it's reflected in the, the outcome of the deal. I mean, they're paying for his salary. We're paying league minimum this year. And he gave up, you know, two top 10 prospects, but he held on to the pitching, which is obviously prized possessions uh, Mm -hmm. from go. And, but we let go, go. Um, <laughs> Just going to keep beating that one with a stick, aren't you? <laughs> uh, you're talking about sucking and beating it with a stick? I, don't, I, yeah. I got lost. But um, <laughs> either way, it just feels like a better put together deal. And mm-hmm. the other thing that I think is also getting overshadowed to kind of go against the point I just made is that we yeah. don't know what Wusa Go is I mean it's not fair to judge him on anything. He's he went to spring training, got hurt, and we don't know what he is. So oh. we don't know how big of a piece that is that left. And then with prospects, you never know. But it's nice yeah. to have him. Tony Gwynn yeah. Light. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think too, I think you had kind of mentioned it before too, but right, like Marlon's still paying a salary this year too, which is obviously a big factor as Padres cutting payroll and everything. So I think that it's just kind of another little value add there. Um Can't really be mad at that. Um, And two, I guess like another thing I was thinking about, right? Like I know I just mentioned, oh, we're getting rid of all these outfielders that we need. But I mean, it sure seems like the MO nowadays is we don't need outfielders. We just need more shortstops, which we still have in the farm system. Um, So, hey, who knows, right? Like maybe. uh, And I mean, I guess another point too, right? Like Arise is, you know, obviously definitely been more of an infielder of late, but I'm pretty sure he has history of playing corner outfield here and there. Hey, so, cool. like, if you need to throw him in left field, right, like, you could do that, too. Um, you just get versatility. And yeah. if mm-hmm. there's anything we know about Preller and company is that they like versatility. I mean, look at Jake Cronorth. Look at Hassan yep. Kim. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, it's just a lot. Look at and Donovan Solano. Solano. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Perfect segue, right? So that was those are some more of the moves the Padres made, right? We sent Graham Pauly, who was scuffling a bit, uh, down to AAA. Probably good for for both sides, I think. Um, replacing with Donovan yeah. Solano, a, a pro's pro, a tough at bat. 
um, and versatile player, like you just mentioned. Um, so yeah, a couple, couple things shaken up there, you know, really, I think, you know, think about that, right? Like, I feel like Solano and Arise are probably two of the best contact guys in the game, like period, probably. Um, so just yeah. like what that does to extend your lineup, right? Tough at bats, whatever it is. Um, nice to have for sure. Well, it also felt good that it feels like Preller and Schilt are on the same page because this is what mm-hmm. we call a scheme fit. You know, yeah. this is a guy, we, we always say we have guys that, you know, hit for average, like referring to like maybe uh, Jake Cornworth. Well, he kind of hits for average. He has, you know, pop gap to gap. And it's he's not a true average guy. Arias is a true yeah. bat for average guy. Mm-hmm. And what they've been preaching this year was, we're going to hit the ball to the middle of the field. We're going to use Peco Park the way it's supposed to be used and not try and beat Peco Park by hitting home runs. It hasn't worked for us in the past. We're going to just have better at bats and do X, Y, Z. Well, this guy will do X, Y, Z in that scheme. So yeah. having Preller go out and get guys that Schilt is looking to, you know, kind of fulfill these goals, mm-hmm. it's a good fit. I like the fit. I like that there seems to be a plan and it doesn't feel like, you know, we overpaid. We don't know until they come up, but like, yeah, it's, it's that's more the thing, right? Than that's other the prospect deals. conundrum, right? It's like you maybe you feel like you overpaid or underpaid, but you're not going to know for another couple of years. And you know, that how seems to be I know we got overpaid. Hmm. Bogarts is overpaid. I know that now. I don't need time for that one. <laughs> oh my lord, hey, he's got a long contract, dude. I'm going to give him some more time. Um, yeah, you it know, is kind of get funny to think age. about. <laughs> how about uh, how about that? first start for a rise though right talk about like he showed up i believe they said what like an hour or Three two o'clock. before first yeah. pitch and just starts slapping around the first base coach a bit and gets what four for five or something <laughs> <laughs> dude he waxed the dying. shit out of them man that was nuts like i i'm it's glad bad. i'm not first base coach did you see not even that time. dude that's oh my <laughs> god you don't have to freaking defibrillate that guy over at first base but, I can't uh, imagine. I just imagine him being there, like getting hit, and he's like, "Hey, uh, I'm not going to bring this up. I'm glad you got a knock, but uh, we will be talking about this in the clubhouse. Not again. <laughs> Don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shot if the game's going four for five. But uh, very true. Uh, in other news, Joe Musgrove had his first like good start in a while, right? A couple a couple starts ago. Only now, you know, when the things look like they're turning. And possibly the right way. Now your boy's on the injured list. Can't have two good things happening. All uh, right, exactly. So I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I was I was actually just reading about about this before this um, call here and elbow. It sounds like sounds like elbow. I don't know if did you look into it more. That's, that's all that I've heard about it. I, um, I didn't. Okay, I don't but think yeah, I but, wanted to look at it. Yeah, it was just kind of like one of those things where it was almost like a little asterisk that you see on the little transactions after the whole Arise thing. And they're like, oh, Solano, Arise, Bogleman. And it's like, oh, by the way, Joe Musgrove's on the, the injured list now. It's like, what What, what do you mean? But, um, but what that does, is like, yes. Yeah, I know. I was to say, what that <laughs> does mean is that our boy Randy Vasquez is coming back up, which – I don't know. I, as you know, I like the guy. I think I think he's going to be better than his current numbers show because I think those are even inflated um, due to like just some really bad defense. I remember that he got, and I don't know. I just for some reason, you know, certain guys just they, they seem like they got it. And I guess for me, he's one of those guys. But it's still very early. Um, sure, certainly has a test tomorrow going up against my other guy that I really wanted the Padres to get and. Shota Imanaga for the Cubs. That'll be yep. a very interesting matchup. You know what? Uh, I think we'll win that game. I think, think Shota so? mm-hmm. is due for his first loss, and I think mm-hmm. Vasquez is better than his numbers. Let's have a balance out act here. We get Ooh. that guy. Boom. Um, but you want to know a silent winner of Joe going down? Hmm. Matt Waldron. That guy was about to get bounced for Vasquez to get an opportunity in the five spot. Mm-hmm. And now he's kind of by default, like, all right, you get one more, you know, even yeah. now it might still give, yeah. they might give it to Brito. They might give Brito a shot. Uh, Cause Waldron hasn't been, he's been a little shaky lately. And mm-hmm. I like Waldron. Uh, I thought he was doing a really good job in that five spot, but lately it just has not been great. Yeah. I was also looking at speaking of kind of, yeah, like those fringe guys, um, after the trade, I was kind of looking at like, you know, well, we just got rid of three of our top 15 prospects or whatever. 
Um, and I just wanted to kind of get a list, like look at the list, like how does that shake things up? And I was just checking out some of the pitching. It was Adam Mazur, I think was a name yeah. that I saw pop up who I really didn't know much about at all. But then I was just kind of looking at some of those guys' numbers and it was like, looked really good this year. Um, triple A, I think he was sub one whip, um, a couple wins, like solid ER, like a two dot something, I think. And, and I was like, is that hmm, good? Or wonder if this dude needs to needs to do something. I've been hearing that name a little bit more. Um, so I was curious if that? maybe instead of Vasquez, they were going to go there, but I don't know. He's uh, he's knocking at the door. Um, <laughs> yeah. You can, you can count on jokes like that here at the fireside chat, but oh yeah, uh, there, is a, <laughs> there is a wave of young pitching that is going to come up in the next year to two years, man. It's going to be exciting. I'm genuinely no. excited about that. Um, but also, Homer Bush Jr., another, when we talk about, yep. you know, the void and prospects in the outfield, he's still around. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. there, there are pieces. We've got that young shortstop. Um, um, you know, he plays shortstop. Yeah. Yeah. They you know, they all, left fielder. All the best players <laughs> play shortstop where, where they all international. Um, there's another guy, too. Uh, excuse me. Ornelas, I think. Teresa no, or something. Paul the Jr. Tr- Teresa Ornelas, <laughs> I believe is his name, but he's like a top 15 guy too, I think. So it's like, yeah. it's not like we're fully depleted after that yeah. trade. It's there's still guys. Um, but yeah, like you said, definitely a lot knocking on the door. I was just curious if, you know, these moves, if the Musgrove injury did any of that, not yet, but it's a long season. I'm sure we might see a lot of that coming on here very soon. And also the um, Musgrove situation, yeah. this is what I'll wrap it up with. Yeah. It is not the same hole or gap to fill as Musgrove of years past. He has not mm-hmm. had a great start to the year. He's given us two good outings, um, which, you know, it's not like you're losing Cease, who has been your horse so far. Oh, this man. Year and, and He's been you unreal. Good after good outing. So, you know, we're, we're at 500 now. Mm-hmm. With a Musgrove who wasn't playing like Musgrove, he was probably honestly pitching like a four or five guy. So maybe someone steps up and we're in an even better spot. Call me an optimist. I don't know, but uh, hopefully he comes back. I mean, I right. mean, you have a you have a great point. I mean, right? Like he he had what maybe one and a half good starts so far. So it's like, yeah, why not give one of these guys another shot? Or right, a Vasquez who who pitched well didn't really get as much support. It could be a good thing. Silver linings, right? Um, think too right there's been a little bit of bullpen action i I think i maybe said this last time but i just feel like we're still searching i feel like you're still searching for those seven eighth inning guys to really lock it down right like um matt has kind of been shaky de los santos looks really good but then we'll give up a bomb or something peralta looked really good for a minute there but he's kind of been giving it up like i don't know that that worries me a little bit but at least suarez is been shoving it with his fastballs. <laughs> I he's he's the league enigma. I don't understand it. I just don't. It's I mean, wild. As, as professional hitters, you know, I believe they could sit a hundred and five mile an hour fastball and hit it if they know it's coming. And they know it's coming, but they're not hitting it. And it's not I mean, it's it's gotta be great. I mean I it I has to be. I think you have to be in the box to really get it. I, I think we're sitting at home like if I'm a fan on the other team, I'm going, what the fuck guys? It's a fastball. You know it's coming. Hit it. Right. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's the subtleties of his, you know, maybe the sink just sinks just enough. Maybe the cut just cuts just enough just to give him a little bit of I, something. I and then that one hundo straight gets right past it, dog. I don't believe in I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That. I don't know. I think there's I other know. guys doing like running on sinkers and two seamers and cutters. Like yeah. true p- differences in speed and like a Josh know. Hader who's getting absolutely lit this year. It's it's fair territory because he's former Padre here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could talk about him. Um, but no, I'm happy that Suarez keeps he keeps shoving. But I was saying earlier, it's kind of a curse because they had this this uh, two week span where the bullpen was lights out, and they yeah. did have kind of this solidified like uh, Peralta was high leverage, and then you had De Los Santos come in for seven you had mm-hmm. our uh oh my gosh other pitcher japanese Matsui. 
Matsui. Matsui would come in for the eighth, make it slow down a little bit, and then they'd throw Suarez. And I think I, in an ideal world, that's kind of what you want. Um, Yeah. and they've been trying to run that out, and it's been backfiring a little bit. I think they know their rules. I think they just need to execute better, and they're they're still figuring it out. But I'm not worried about our pen as much as other people are. I think they're all really solid, and I think they're going to be just fine. Yeah. I, I tend to agree. It's just, you know, it just seems like no matter what, they just keep giving it up. But again, early, um, and there's a lot more games to happen. As you mentioned, the Padres are sitting at five hundo. Two positive notes. What you got? Well, this is kind of cool, huh? Uh, <laughs> how so about cool. Profar, Profar and Cronenworth? Mm-hmm. Is that, Cronenworth extended his hit game streak to like 10 or something the other day. And he looks Profar good. has been just, we, we keep saying like, oh, this this run Profar is not going to last. But it's like, well, we're almost, what, like 40 games in the season. It's still lasting. Like, I'm going to keep saying it's not going to last. Pretty chunky. <laughs> <laughs> Homeboy is too playing. irrelevant to last. <laughs> <laughs> Had to resurface that one, especially because Dodgers are coming to town this week. <laughs> I'm going to be at that game. You going to be at the game? Oh, no. <laughs> thanks, thanks for the invite. <laughs> <laughs> Did your uh, boy Rise hook it up with some tickets? Is that what happened? Because you guys are homies, yeah, we're, right? We're tight, we're tight like that. Yeah, uh, so I thought. Yeah, com- when it's on the company's time. Yeah, we'll mm. go. <laughs> nice. Love it. Which which game are you going to? Saturday. Saturday. Do we know the pitching matchup for that yet? No, nah, too far out. Padres don't even know the pitching matchup yet. Yeah. But that's good stuff. Gonna see some win the series. I mean, ask me again after another right pitching matchup. <laughs> <laughs> if we run into a glass now and uh, Yamamoto. I mean, actually, the Padres have Yamamoto's number. Glasnow's going to shove, and then it's kind of wild card. I feel like that's true, mm, right? But the Dodgers, I feel like, have been on a heater of late, haven't they? I have no idea. Uh, Otani well, set the record for Japanese-born homers. He went like four for four the other day with two bombs. Dude's a freak. But at least we get to see him play a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I love watching him kick our ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got All our eyes now. Oscar and uh, called, up, called up for that because he. Oh, that's right. That was another aspect of the whole bullpen situation, right? It's like he would kind of locked down like some of those seven, eighth innings last year, but then hadn't mm-hmm. really been uh, doing it. But right. And Schulte likes that matchup with um, Freeman and, and uh, Otani against Cosgrove. Months. Interesting. Um, more Very interesting, better, really solid, dude. I thought his last couple of outings, I every time, man, I watch him pitch, he's just effortless upper 90s, right? Like, so smooth, so like just low Dark effort, course. it seems like. But 98, 97 with ease, like that is that's lethal. And the dude can throw innings too. Um, yeah, I'm curious, you know, with with some of these, um, like with a Vasquez or if a Brito gets a star or whatever, like do we do some sort of piggyback with Morahone? You know what I mean? I like they, do. as they say, it's once you see you know a lineup second or third time, right? It's when the averages and slugging or whatever shoot way up. So maybe you just throw a Morahone in the wrench right there, and bam, bam. Just a thought. If 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 we see that, oh, we're gonna oh, definitely. Oh. Well, we'll call up Mike Schilt and tell him. <laughs> hey Mikey. <laughs> hey Mikey. Think about this, why don't you? He's sleeping uh, on my cot right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. We had insider. Remember Bo Mel was a listener to the show last year when we told him to shake up the lineups. And lo and yeah. behold, it happened. And look how it worked out for him. I know. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> hey, he got his dream job after the year. What are you talking about? Yeah, that's true. Unreal. And he was it. Um, so, yeah, we got wrapping up Chicago, L.A. coming up next. I mean, it, it sure seems like like we had mentioned before, we tough haven't schedule. really. We've just got a tough schedule, right? It sure seems like I, I can't think of a, a series that hasn't been kind of like, OK, we can take the foot off the gas and take a step back. Right. Like it's been it's been Philadelphia. Even Cincinnati was a good team, I guess. I guess we put the Rockies, Rockies in the Rockies there, but as well, though. yeah, awesome. exactly. Exactly. Same thing, right? Like, it's one of those teams that just is pesky and always plays better when they play against the pods. So it's just been interesting in that respect. But I will say 
the grit and the deter, I guess like the, the commitment to doing the little things of this year's team definitely does. I don't know. You can see it just watching the games, right? There's a whole different vibe. And even when we're kind of gone on some of these roller coastery um, runs, I guess you would say it, it sure seems like even, even during the good or the bad, this squad still kind of seems like they're in the same kind of headspace, which honestly is great to see. Yeah. I'll, I'll say this. It's weird to, cause we talk about how they're doing the little things better this time around. And, you know, they seem like a different team and I, I agree with that, but ironically the thing they were so good at last year, defense mm-hmm. has been mm. something that has slipped up at times here, which is so yeah. weird because when you're doing the little things right and being locked in at all times, defense is normally what you can count on to be consistent and steady if you're doing X, Y, and Z, right. right. Um, funny to see that not be the case this year. But definitely doing the little things right when it comes to the offensive approaches, being locked in for every at bat. I have not seen a lot of hanging their heads and losses, like in a in a you know sure lose situation, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. It's been fun to watch them. I really enjoy watching this team. I like having Arias added to the mix. I'm excited to see what the pitchers do to step up and and figure out how to fill this hole because we're 500, man. Yeah. We're doing what we need to do against good teams, and you know, like we've said throughout this year it's just a matter of when we see the results because they're building something yes. just because their records at 500 doesn't mean they're not building a solid foundation to grow on and i think they are growing well i'm in the strong like belief too i always thought this is that if you can keep your your team at that 500 range by the time you reach like august or so like honestly you're right in it up until that like kind of last wild card run um so yeah honestly i would say Padres are in a good spot. You know, like obviously, would we want to have a better record? Sure, of course. But honestly, like 500 is, uh, in my perspective, is totally fine at this point of the year. Um, and I think there's so many just, right, like you mentioned, there's a lot of positive things that we're doing. Funny enough, right, like certain defensive things aren't as good, but there's, I feel like the base running is better. Um, yeah. Just tough at bats is better, right? And I, I don't even, I don't even necessarily want to knock like, our defense has like the errors have been compounding. I think I remember you kind of mentioning that to me, shared some stats like the other week where it's like every time an error happens, like multiple, yeah, multiple things. But then we're also getting some, you know, we're getting that Tatis platinum glove out in right field still, you know, that when he threw Cattell Marte out at first base, that was one of the most insane outfield plays I've ever seen. So I wanted to definitely highlight that. That was, that was just absurd. Um, Yeah. You know, so it's just like it, it's interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I love. Shout out. Yeah, Jackson Merrill playing a solid center field. Oh yeah, we haven't talked about him playing a subpar or costing us runs. And this is a kid that has not played center field mm-hmm. for years and years. He was a shortstop, and right. he has adjusted really well and played a very solid center. Um, I'm sure he's leaning on on Toddy the way that he converted to the outfield, and and they're helping him go stride for stride there. But um, yeah, we're 500 with a first year manager, with a lot of pieces that left the year prior. You got to be pretty proud of where they're at now, knowing that it's only going to be better. Knock on wood. No. I just wanted to pull up since you had mentioned that because I was like, it sure seems like Jackson Merrill, right? Totally serviceable center field. I'm looking at. That's where it's like stat stuff. stuff. <laughs> no, no, no. It's even it it complements exactly what you're saying. He is in the 91st percentile of outfield range and an wow. 88th percentile of arm strength. Doesn't That's doesn't really have like any assists or anything yet, but those are just like route efficiency and arm strength, arguably two of the, you know, best indicators of a successful outfielder. He is close to like the 90th percentile on both. So Route efficiency is. shocks me because that's one of the things that you develop over time as an outfielder. You know, right. that's the difference between a good and a great. You know, there's plenty of guys who can fly, but their routes are dog poop and they no. won't get to balls they should. And there's plenty of slow. We, we've seen them over the years of time where a slow corner outfielder, but he catches everything. It's like, wow, those are efficient routes. So mm-hmm. if he's already doing that, he has good speed, you right. know, only going to get better. Exactly. So maybe, maybe, uh, <laughs> Maybe Preller's right all along. Maybe it's all about building shortstops. 
but uh chill <laughs> yeah, yeah, chill. chill. <laughs> oh my gosh any here's it well I think that wraps it up for this week. We're very excited. Again, Dodgers are coming into town. That's going to be an epic series. We will definitely need to recap that one because I'm sure crazy stuff always every goes game, down. Actually. We talk every about recapping every single game. Every Dodgers game. We'll have a post, Ooh, post game wrap up. I, I, like, I like that. Big stuff, big series, big time with the Fireside Chat. Thank you all again for joining in. Again, if you have any questions, any comments, anything, we want to start incorporating those into these shows. So let us know. Uh, Again, I'm Vince. This is Brandon. This has been the Fireside Chat. We'll catch you next time. Later.